What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be going over something very simple. Uh, it's basically just setting up a timer app and um, by the end of this we're going to be getting our timer working. As you can see we already have all the UI laid out. Uh, the play button is working uh, UI wise and then we have a reset button and then this is going to obviously be the label that's going to be updating with our timer. But before we jump into that, I just want to say, make sure you head over to kilolococom Check out my website. Um, a lot of people are finding that having access to me on Slack is very valuable. So it's only $8 a month. Just make sure you check it out. All right, guys. So let's just jump in and uh, look at the code. So as always, the link is in the description if you want to download the starter project and the finished project for free. So as you can see, what we have is just a basic view controller and we have access to the label, play pause button, and um, actually let's take a look at the UI first. So this is our storyboard, very basic as you guys saw in the simulator, just um, two buttons right here. And then we're gonna just be modifying this button whenever we tap it so that it turns to a pause button. And we can see that actually happening right here in the did tap start or pause. And then um, we have a, a function that's essentially changing that UI for us. So just showing the play button when it needs to be displayed. And then we have a connection to the reset button as well. So getting into this, if we wanted to add a timer to make our clock or label update accordingly, all we have to do is guess what? Add a timer. So there is an object called timer and that's what we're gonna be working with the entire time. Very simple, very straightforward. Unfortunately, a timer doesn't actually hold value, um, hold the value of the duration of the timer. All it is is just made to essentially fire, um, you know, repeatedly. So we're going to actually have to capture our duration manually or, well, yeah, I guess manually would be the right word. All right. And we're just going to start off at zero because obviously, you know, clock start at zero and we're going to just have it as a single zero. I don't want to do dot zero because that would make it a... Um, uh, double and essentially we just want to show the whole numbers. We're just going to show integers in this video In the next video I'll go over formatting strings so that we can show you know all these different things But for right now just stick with the integer All right So the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to add in the functionality that's going to be interacting with the timer So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a, a new function called toggle timer And that's going to take a boolean on whether we should be toggling the timer on or we should be to toggling the timer off essentially pausing it. So what we want to do is if we're toggling the timer on, essentially we want to activate the timer so that it starts firing. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a function that's going to allow us to say how often our timer should fire. And we're going to also include the functionality that is going to cause the timer to essentially update the UI as well. All right, so as you can see, we're actually changing the instance of our timer right here, the one that's that we set up here. We're changing the instance of the timer to this new timer, and we're creating it from this um, class property or this class function that allows us to create a timer called schedule timer with time interval. So how often do you want it to fire? This is going to be a time interval of um, like uh, seconds or yeah, essentially referring to the second. So we want it to fire every single second. If we wanted to do it like less than a second, we could do, you know, since it's a time interval, essentially a double, we could do dot, uh, zero dot one. That would be every uh, like 10th of a second, right? So um, this is where we're gonna control how often our timer's firing. Right now, we just wanna do it every second. We want to set it to repeats, obviously true. You know, we don't want this to just fire and then stop, you know, calling or we don't want it to just fire once. Right. And then in the block, we have this completion handler, which passes in the timer itself, but we're actually not going to use it. So I'm going to just go ahead and do an underscore, but we are going to be updating the UI directly in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make sure that we're capturing a weak reference to self. So we're just going to do weak self like that. Now for our code block, it's very simple. All we need to do is we need to update our duration. So we need to increase our duration by one. And then we also need to update the label to make sure that it's displaying the correct duration. So let's do that now. 
All right, so since we are actually capturing a weak reference to self, I'm making sure to unwrap self by calling it strong self. And then uh, all we're doing from right here is we're going we gonna to update that bad boy. We're going to say plus one. Thank you. And then from there, we're going to uh, reference our label. We're going to update the text to the new duration. We're going to just wrap that duration in a string because it is, once again, an integer. So that's pretty much all we need to do to get our timer started. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, so we have the beautiful application opened up and we're gonna just press play. We're gonna see that the UI is updating, but we actually notice that our that our button is not firing and that's because I forgot to call the actual function. So let's go back over there and call that function. I always do that, I always do that. All right, so as you can see, we're um, referencing is, is timer on this uh, little Boolean that we have right here that controls the UI. So we're just gonna use that as well. And that's what we're gonna pass into toggle timer on. So we're just gonna check, is it on? And then we're gonna, we're gonna uh, essentially turn it on. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now let's try it. All right, back to the very sexy application. We press play, let's see what happens. Oh, oh, it's working. Oh yeah, that's how I do it. All right, but we also noticed that our, our button doesn't do anything. Also keep in mind that as long as we keep tapping it, it's going to cause this timer to keep firing and firing and firing. It's not good. So what's happening is obviously it's not taking 180 seconds for me to say the sentence, but um, it's causing the, the timer to constantly be updated. So we really don't want that to happen. And then also we wanna be able to restart our timer. As you can see, it's flashing zero when I do it like really fast. You might be able to see it. I'm not sure, but that's only because the UI is uh, or the the function that's connected to reset is setting the label to zero. So let's go ahead and um, fix all of that. Jumping back over to the application, let's go ahead and stop that before it goes crazy and dies. And uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to go down to the did tap reset. We just want to make sure instead of the label showing um, just zero. We're just going to make sure that it's going to um, show the duration because um, we want to make sure that the duration is being updated as well. So we're going to set the duration to zero and then we're going to show the duration inside the, um, as the as the string for the text. Very simple, very simple indeed. All right, so let's go back up. And then the other problem that we were having was that when, whenever we would tap this timer, what would end up happening is that it would just continue to fire faster and faster and faster. And then we were like, oh my God. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that if if the timer is toggled on, then we're calling this fun functionality. But if it's off, then we wanna make sure that we pause the timer. So let's go ahead and do that now. And it's actually extremely easy in order to pause a timer. All you have to do is say timer dot invalidate and that's going to pause the timer so if we go ahead and run our beautiful app now everything should be coming together quite nicely so let's go ahead and hit that play we hit play bam it's firing all right let's hit play again cool no apocalyptic extra counting of the timer so we're not going to blow up anymore so let's press, press play again and you can see that it's essentially just starting picking up right where it left off because once again we're using that uh duration value which is never being set to zero until we actually go down here to the did tap reset so if we go ahead and pause this and we hit reset it goes back to zero now if we press play it should start back at one two three so let's go ahead and hit reset right now and let's see what happens when we hit reset what happens is it goes back down to zero because we're setting the duration to zero, but we're actually not invalidating the timer. So we want, we also want to make sure that we invalidate the timer when we hit reset. So let's go ahead and add that in real quick. So going back over to the project, all we're going to do is we're just going to say, Hey, timer, you need to chill for a second. All right. So we're going to pause it. We're going to set the duration to zero. Then we're going to start uh, and then we're going to update the, the label. So everything is kind of working as expected. Whenever we hit reset, it should pause automatically. All right, let's do this. All right, we hit play. Bam. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight M's in my bank account. Uh, hit reset now. Uh, hit reset now. Uh, see, 
it worked. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show you guys. I just wanted to keep uh, show you guys something very simple, but uh, using a timer can actually come in handy, you know, especially when you're working with, um, you know, things that depend on, um, you know, obviously time in your UI. So just keep that in mind. This is uh, something very easy to accomplish. Now, uh, one last thing that I just want to mention about the timer is that the timer actually only um, is only reliable while your app is in the foreground. If you were to put your app in the background, um, you could no longer rely on the um, on the timer to work. Now, what you really need to uh, be uh, careful of is that what you'll see is if you start um, if you start running your timer and it starts firing, and you put your app in the background while it's in the simulator, it will actually continue to work, but when when you actually try to do this on a real device because your device doesn't work exactly like a simulator you're going to find that you're getting incorrect timer counts and the reason i know this is because a timer was actually um one of the first apps that i wanted to make oh well it didn't work this time maybe they maybe they corrected it but just keep in mind that the timer does run um does not run in the background so as soon as your app enters the background you need to just assume that your timer is going to be incorrect after that point maybe um you know add a couple of uh you know uh, notifications to let you know that the timer hit the background or that the app went into the background and that you no longer um, need this timer to be you know firing or whatever because it's going to be incorrect so that's going to be all for today guys thank you for coming in i appreciate your time and make sure you go out there and you keep coding passionately baby oh yeah later